Uh oh, did I break it? No, looks looks good. Oh, oh you it's broken. You I think I, broken. I think I got. It. There we go. Hey, <laughs> welcome to this week's Beyond Nemesis podcast, everybody. Uh, I'm joined today by Maz, who's stepping in for for Jada. Jada had a little bit of a family emergency, so say hello to Maz, everybody. Or Maz, say hello to everybody. Yeah, happy I guess other way around. <laughs> Uh, so we got a special episode this week because we have a Nemesis related announcement uh, coming up in about, uh, let's say, 20, 30 minutes, which is uh, I'm pretty excited for it. I know that much. I've been pretty excited for this one for a while. So uh, that's to come. And in the meantime, uh, which I don't know, do you want to do the honors when the, when the time comes? I mean, well, you're co-owner. You know, it doesn't, so. it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I, you know, I don't <laughs> mind sharing sharing in the announcement. Plus, it's I know it's a. Uh... A uh, game that you're uh, just as excited about, if not as you know, more excited because you're you've you've probably been playing it more than me. So maybe a little bit since like 2018 or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I played it until last year. So you definitely. Well, we'll, we'll figure it out. One up on that. We'll roll with it. Um. So what we're gonna start with is like the E3 period has basically started. The non E3 uh, period. Uh, it's spread out over a whole bunch of different conferences now. Uh, individual developers and publishers are kind of all doing their own thing. But Sony let us off this week with, um, I wouldn't call it a, a conference equivalent. It was one of their state of plays, which is like, I like Nintendo Direct, like half an hour, just like trailers, not like a big like show or conference. But um, I expect they will be part of Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest as well. Um, at least a game or two in there. But uh, just going to talk a little bit about the games that we saw. And uh, I sh I'm sure, since I know Maz is a PlayStation guy, I'm going to troll him for the next 25 minutes of discussion. But uh, uh, let let's start with uh, Resident Evil 4, which was probably my favorite uh, game that they showed during state of play did you get to watch state of play live or did you see the tra the trailers after uh, i saw some of the stuff after the fact now <clears throat> don't get me wrong i'm i'm happy that they are doing resident evil 4 remake but i was kind of hoping to see some other stuff make a comeback like the room maybe some of the old school ones that were a little more obscure that they could have brought to a bigger stage yeah i i think resident evil 4 to me is like a top 20 game of all time i think it looks really good, but I kind of thought the trailer was kind of like, like the trailer itself was like kind of weak. Like the way they like edited the trailer was like, like I almost felt like they let an intern do it. Like they showed the the release date first and then they showed the game's logo and then they showed the game, which was just like kind of like a bizarre way yeah, of like, that's... hey, here's our. You know, big exciting <laughs> you announcement. Think you start with the game first. Yeah, and then, like it's so. And then you get hyped up and you're like, oh, when is it coming? not yeah. the opposite it's like somebody in the marketing department thought it, it would be like a really good idea to do it in reverse and then like like no there's actually some things that you do this way because that's actually the way you're supposed to do it because you build you build up some buzz and hype <laughs> yeah. around it first since this was the first time they showed the game period um <clears throat> do you play hey no i I, I never give PlayStation people hell. I mean, come on. What are you talking about? That's not me. Um, yeah, I finally admitted something on, on social media this week because I said, hey, I've always been a PlayStation over Xbox kind of person. But, uh, you know, Halo 2, that was definitely probably the best memory growing up is, is playing your friends in Halo 2. Like, yeah. I will it was the first of its kind that. experience. That's why. Like, yeah. it was the first console online game that, like, everybody had basically um staying with the horror thing though uh callisto protocol also got shown uh which is the new uh game from the creator of dead space did you have a chance to check out that one i didn't see the callisto protocol unless it, i did see a video that was talking about dead space that kind of uh looked very hectic so i don't know if it was callisto or not um mm -hmm. So I didn't look into that one particularly, but uh, Dead Space was a good was a good game. Yeah, it, it, this is his new uh, the creator of Dead Space new IP. So it'll be interesting because it, like within the same literally the same 30 day period, there's the Dead Space remake 
and Callisto Protocol both come out. One comes out in December, one comes out in January. So it's like, what's going to be better? Like, the original franchise or the franchise that's now being created to, like, you know, evolve it? I feel like uh, probably Callisto will likely be a better game. You know, you... I don't know. It's hard because a lot of classics, obviously the reason that they're remaking it is because they're still, yeah, you know, they're still popular and people want to see those things. But uh, it's hard to argue that if the same dev is working on it, they should have improved on those systems and made a better game. So I'm excited to see what happens with both of those, actually. I, it will be. Yeah, it will be interesting to see them go against each other. And it, it's so funny because everybody... I, I wouldn't. I, I don't understand why they would release them near the same time, though. That's yeah. a little puzzling. It, that's you think what you I... want to give someone some t- one of the games <laughs> some time to do well and then release the other one. Yeah, it's uh, been, build off that hype. It's funny because like for ten years everybody's been asking for Dead Space to come back, and now we're basically getting like two at the exact same time. Like the original Dead Space rebooted and kind of like a successor. So it's like. Hopefully what doesn't happen is like they don't they don't eat into each other and both like fail because they're stealing from each like stealing like players from each other and then they both bomb and then they both go away. Well, who knows? I could be wrong. They could you could uh, play the remake and then be hyped up and want to play, you know, the next iteration and they're That's like, true well, too. The next iteration's not out, but they could play each other out. Game. Yeah. yeah. So it could kind of build upon uh that feeling so you're like oh man this is such a great game i wish the next one was out well technically the next one's not but something kind of uh similar will yeah be out right spiritual right successor thereafter. yeah how about i don't know are you a final fantasy guy i feel like you are um yeah i'm a pretty big final fantasy guy uh I, I wouldn't say i'm one of the most die hard like yeah but uh final fantasy 10 is my favorite uh, okay so, you know, I'm not one of those Final Fantasy 7 is the greatest Final Fantasies. I really love the story in 10. Uh, I think Blitzball should be a standalone game. I'm just throwing it what out. What the heck is Blitzball? <laughs> you got to play Final Fantasy 10. Okay. Uh, but I like Final Fantasy. Um, there's other the series trailer? that I'm more passionate about, but I really like Final Fantasy. Did you see the trailer I did. For I liked the combat. The combat was interesting. Yeah. I've heard a lot of comments uh, both ways from Final Fantasy fans. But the thing is, like, for me, I'm not one of those, like, hey, uh, you know, RPG needs to be traditionally turn-based or, like, have that same similar system. I'm open as long as the story's good. And they usually, you know, Square Enix, usually their story's on point. So as long as the combat's good and the story's good, I don't mind what kind of combat system it has. I, I honestly couldn't tell. And maybe this got confirmed in an interview afterwards or something. I don't know. I couldn't tell if the cop if because everybody was saying it looks like Devil May Cry the combat, it and I could does. see that comparison. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't tell if it was literally like action combat or if it just has like Devil May Cry looking combat in a turn based format. Like if the it didn't look it definitely didn't tell. look turn based. It definitely looked like it was real time combat. It didn't it didn't look like turn based at all. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a. I, I know that the Final Fantasy series has done some weird things too with their, where their combat well, like systems all, have been like hybrid. Their, like, like, yeah, their last few games, even Stranger of <laughs> Paradise, uh, it wasn't turn based. Yeah. So I mean, well, that was Team Ninja, though. That was a totally different. Yeah, but but still. Yeah. yeah. Um, like a lot of their recent Final Fantasies have been real time combat. There's yeah. been some slight things that were kind of turn based, but not the whole systems like the old Final yeah. Fantasies. As long as they have those RPG elements and mix in a good story, the combat's really the least of my worries. Yeah. I I honestly watched the trailer for 16, and I was like, this looks, the last Final Fantasy game I played was Final Fantasy VIII. I was like, this looks like the same game with better graphics. Like, every Final Fantasy looks the same to me. Like, I, I, I no, hate to say it, missed, but they oh, do. There's so, many, there's so many good Final Fantasies <clears throat> after that. Like, 7 and 8 are iconic, but, you know, 9... I, I never finished 9, so I can't speak to that, but 10 was amazing. Um, 12 was really good. So, 14's in top of the MMO market right now. Yeah. Well, after WoW kind of had their... <laughs> Lizard and WoW kind of had their issues. A Everybody few issues. Kind of blocked, blocked More than a few Final issues. Fantasy. Yeah, so... It's like, a, it's like a haven for, like, lost MMO players at this point. It, like, it it's, kind of is. It's like... It, it, if you're a refugee from another MMO, please come here. 
it kind of it reeled me in a little bit at that time too. It was like I was kind of in between, and I'm like, ah, I need a good MMO, and everybody was posting all about it. So I was like, oh, you know what? Let me get back into Final Fantasy, and yeah, I played it briefly, and I'm like, ah, I just don't have time to dedicate to these MMOs anymore. MMOs are hard. yeah, like I love MMOs. This is what I do with like every MMO that comes out. I play it for like a week or two. I'm like, man, this is so awesome. And then like in the third week, I'm like can't do it <laughs> like i, I want to do have, it but i can't yeah same thing and i'll even have moments of weakness where i'll sub to the game again and i'm like i'm gonna play it and then yep. i'm just subbing for months and i'm like dang it i need to cancel that subscription i'm not I, even playing i have bought every world of warcraft expansion like at launch and but since i'm talking like probably like five at least expansions in a row i play it i buy it i play it for like less than a month and then i just like move on Almost like a single oh, yeah. player I'm game. Like that with, like, just... I'm like that with most most games. I, like I'll just play it for a day or two, and like I, last week I bought Gran Turismo Seven finally, and I was excited. I'm like, man, I'm gonna play that. I'm gonna be racing all day when I you know, when I get home. Uh, and I'm still getting the licenses because the first day I was like, oh, I'm just gonna get all the gold licenses. And uh, uh, and then I did that for like two days, and then I haven't even played it again since then. So I'm like, I do, but I do this all the time. I buy a new game, I play it once or twice, and then it just goes on the shelf. Yeah, it's kind of like the adult gaming life, though. Like, it's <laughs> look at my of massive it. collection of games that I yeah, never play. Right. Uh, and by I the buy... time you intend to play them, the game is way out of trend. Yeah. There's like Nobody's I buy games them. live on stream sometimes, and like some of the people uh, talking about you, Frank, if you're listening, like he's he's like you're never gonna play that. Like I don't know why you just bought that. I'm like, yep, yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> just... So I have. I have three games, well, I have more than three games, but just the ones that come to mind that are still in the wrapping from when the game came out. So I have uh, Uncharted 4, <laughs> still still wrapped. I have uh, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origins, still wrapped. <laughs> Never opened them. Hey. <laughs> but yet I have the still books and collectible stuff. I haven't actually opened the game. Resell them. I always intend to, to do it, and I'm just like, oh, I don't have time to do that. Yeah. Uh, Especially story based games because you want to you want to have a lot of free time to just get through the story. Yeah, so. I I have uh sometimes the best time to do that is like when you get sick and you're just like out oh, for yeah. like three days and you're like I could just well, literally I, play this game start to finish and then that's what never, happened look, last never year. Never look back. A, I had a back injury <laughs> and uh, I was out of work for for a couple of weeks uh, and during that time I played more games in that like week yeah. and a half than I played in years. I watched so I had COVID. I, I know you knew this, but I had COVID last week and I like literally could do nothing. I was like debilitated for a few days and uh, I watched all of start to finish. Like, and I don't, if I watch like half an hour of a television show, like every like two, three days, it's like progress for me. I don't have like a lot of time for it usually. And I watched all of Ash versus the Evil Dead, all three seasons while I had COVID. Like I watched the entire and you, series. You said and, like, you had never seen it, right? You no, had never seen it. No. Yeah. I watched it in like, two three days and uh, yeah i loved it uh b though like when i have a fever i have i actually have like fever dreams like i have like weird like what i what i imagine to be like doing like really hard drugs is like like going on like a mushroom and like acid trip like things just like my brain just like fires like all sorts of like images and stuff and watching ash versus the evil dead while having like 103 temperature and then having like these weird like f fever dreams was like oh my god so you just woke up and you were like in 28 days later or something. I looked at my arm and there's a chainsaw attached to it. Yeah, I was like, what the? F <clears throat> Everybody in my house is still okay, I promise. <clears throat> um, How about the Horizon VR game? Did you see the trailer for that? Um, I saw a little bit. I, I haven't watched the whole trailer yet. I can actually pause it. I think I have it uh, on my browser right now yeah. to watch. Um, no, I haven't seen it yet. I... I VR is another one of those things. I got the, are you I got the quest. For it? Yeah, as I said, and I played a bunch of VR stuff and then put it on the shelf. But I'm yeah. excited to do VR more uh, because there's a lot of games that I think that could tap into VR and be really successful. Uh, yeah, with different franchises. Like, I would love to do Assassin's Creed VR. Like that would be one of those games. It's kind of repetitive playing the storyline regularly, but yeah. in VR it would be pretty sick. I, I do. I, I said this is one of those areas where I'm going to critique. I'm going to go after Sony because like. I don't know, like, Sony does, and I want Sony to branch out more, I really do, because, but they do what they do so well, 
and like i think they're able to do that like those like cinematic third person action games you know like ghost of tsushima uh the last of us you know there's a million of them horizon you know they do those so perfectly well spider-man uncharted um, yeah um like i i worry that they're gonna like spread their what am i looking for spread their resources, resources too, thin too thin by thin. by putting so much into like trying to do like what they call it quadruple a game development and P- psvr2 because psvr2 is like naturally going to have like a limited audience because a you got to buy the console and then b you got to buy another i don't think they've said the price yet for uh psvr2 but you know at a minimum well you just buy the, you just have to buy the the vr2 though it's not like a whole different setup yeah I yeah think. i know but you, yeah. you it's it's uh you have to have it a ps5 and psvr2 yeah yeah so it's another three four hundred bucks um so I, i'm just a little worried that like you know they're gonna spread the resources too thin or take away from I, i'm a more traditional guy like I, i'd rather see gorilla um you know, they're doing the mainline horizon games i'd rather see them do like another shooter because they're like the kill zone people you know so like but yeah, kill zone or something else that. i don't care i was but. actually i was kind of sad when kill zone <laughs> kind of died out because i actually really liked the franchise and i thought the the gunplay and the gameplay was really nice um I, I will say like i there wasn't a game that had that many unique weapons in my opinion since uh resistance fall of mm-hmm. man so it was kind of nice to have different types of weapons and different gameplay than the traditional call of duty and halo yeah. and you know stuff like that like those games are fun don't get me wrong in their right. own right but it's nice when a company kind of reinvents the wheel a little yeah. bit and has different gameplay and different guns and uh stuff like that there's been a rumor that gorilla is rebooting socom which i would love um because they've made a lot of they hired a bunch of old socom people from zipper and they hired a bunch of old rainbow six people so there's a rumor that that old kill zone team is kind of, you know, becoming a SOCOM team, which I think would be great. Well, on on subject, SOCOM, the most recent iteration, was actually very underrated um, for use with the the controller. Mm-hmm. Uh, the what was it the move? I forgot what it was called. Yeah, but, I think that's uh, it. But it was actually one of the better games that utilized the the move I don't, controller i don't think um i don't think there was well, ever I like could, i think they could make that into vr pretty successful yeah that's true the previous iteration uh i don't think socom was a series that died because of lack of quality it was because of like i mean the last socom game was the one that sony released the the like dead smack in the middle of that infamous uh, PlayStation oh, yeah. network. It was, it was a outage. horrible timing. Yeah, so the timing it, was it, terrible. And it was online only. So, like, the game literally, you couldn't play it. So, like, why would you buy it? It was a horrible. They, they sent it out to die. I mean, it was weird circumstances that nobody could have predicted. Yeah. But, and then, the like, the PlayStation Move controller stuff didn't work in the beginning of the SOCOM. They had introduced it later. And mm-hmm. it ended up being one of the better games that I played with that controller. Uh, but because of that, I think that they could make it successful with VR because the movement was actually there already. Yeah. Uh, as far as the controller goes. I would take a new SOCOM of any kind. VR, non-VR. Third person just... was pretty fun. <laughs> I, I always like, a lot of people hate on third person shooters, but I think because there's so many first person shooters, I think we actually need more third third person shooters. Actually, I, I, that's why I, I kind of enjoyed <laughs> Rogue Company when it came out. Yeah, now, me too. I, I have a lot of things to say about high res. Yeah, yeah, me but... too. <laughs> Uh, but like that game's good. It's just it has potential. I don't trust. It had I just I just don't trust high res. That's yeah. the thing. It's like I can't invest that much time and effort into a game that's by high res. The problem because it feels like they they wait until a certain time frame after the game and they just completely abandon it. The problem with so, yeah, the problem with their games I feel is like they usually they release it and like everybody plays it and they're like, wow, this gameplay is like really good. And then like. There's no content for it for like six months. And then like the balance is like usually totally broken, like very quickly. And then like by the time they get it like in order again, like you said, it's like a year and a half, two years down the road and everybody's moved on. And it's just like, 
Yeah. And because, I mean, if you look at their track record, like almost every game has been like that, where it gets to a point where they just don't want to support the game anymore. And really all it needs is a little TLC to take it to the next level. Like yeah. Realm Royale, when it came out, I thought that was a really good it game. It was a really fun game. It was very unique for a, a Battle Royale because it had some RPG elements. And they just completely scrapped it and gave up on the resources. And now another game, Spellbreak, has the same <laughs> elements. But, you know, it's yeah. just they gave up on it too early. Obviously, Paladins could have been a lot bigger. Yeah. Uh, Rogue Company, it's still a good game, but you don't hear anything about Rogue it. Rogue Company, like, easily could have been, like, a, like a, a Gears of War refugee game. Could like, have been easily. A, it could have been a, a big esport. Yeah, it still can be, you know, it could kind of make a resurgence kind of like Apex is doing right now um, where you didn't really hear much for the last couple of years. And then maybe it, maybe it makes a resurgence at some point. But with high because res, it's high res. Yeah, yeah, I think I you're right there. If it wasn't high res, <laughs> I would have it a really more sucks because like it. like you said, they're they're always like this close. But they like with the exception of Smite, which has like a, a that's really the only one they haven't market. abandoned because that's their that's their baby. Right. Um everything else because but then even with smite you see like really weird crossover events like right now slipknot, slipknot. <laughs> like, how does it have like, anything to do with like Paladins <laughs> just did a, a <laughs> rambo <laughs> like like a rambo collab like, yeah, like but that's what i'm saying like how does ago. how do those have anything to do with greek mythology and smite like or, let's just throw slipknot in there or like, like normally like odd. paladins just put rambo in the game like okay Normally, that you'd do that around the time of like a new Rambo movie, a new Rambo show, like some type of cross promotion, right? Not just like out of the blue, like, hey, we put Rambo in our game, like. Yeah, but even even if you go on themes, like you know what I mean, like maybe they put Marvel people in Smite, right? Like yeah. Loki, and you have Thor, and you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That would make some kind of sense. Yeah. But like Slipknot, like just makes. <laughs> Absolutely well, Slipknot no hasn't that. been big for like 15 years either. I mean, I'm not, no disrespect. Seriously, I don't mean it. Oh, I, like, I like Slipknot. Slipknot but... was huge when I was in middle school and high school 15 years ago. Like, now I could totally see if they did that in that new Hell. What is it? That new game that's coming out? Hell Metal, whatever. Hell Singer, I think it's called. Hell Singer, Metal Hell Singer, like something like that. Totally makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, but to just. It feels like Smite ran out of ideas, and and maybe they got a an email or a DM one one time by one of them Corey must Taylor. Have known and, some, and Corey yeah, Taylor's one of dudes, like, yeah. Corey Taylor's like, oh man, I love Smite. I, you know, I play it every yeah. so often, and they're like, why don't we do a collaboration? You know yeah. what I mean? Like it just makes or no one, absolutely. One of the programmers sense. like randomly blurted out in a meeting, like, oh hey, my cousin is you know Corey Taylor, like something, <laughs> you know? And they're like, wait, what? And then like, yeah, like, exactly. That's what, that's that what happen? it feels like. It's just extremely random. <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, Spider Man's coming to PC this August. It's official. Are you uh, you down for that? You you played Spider Man, uh, I'm sure, right? Yes, but I'd probably still play it on <laughs> console. I mean, because, like, those types of games for me are more casual. Like, I don't yeah. play those games hardcore, right? Like, uh, <laughs> Batman, Spider-Man, those kinds of games are the ones that, like, you sit on the couch or you, you know, lay down and you, for me at least. Yeah. Those are the games where they're not, they're just a relaxation game. Like, yeah. Story-based, I'm chilling, not trying too hard, so I'm just laying down playing. So I'd probably still play it on console. I don't know yeah. that I'd play a game like that on PC. I think most of the games I play on PC are more, like, hardcore or like i have to lean into it and yeah you know more competitive and then when i want something casual i play it on console yeah i mean i think it's good that it's coming to pc i, I think honestly oh, i think the more is, yeah the more sony games that come to pc it's a win for everybody like it's a win I think for it's sony a win for, yeah it's a win it's for, definitely for a players win. on pc i i wish they would embrace it more like just don't make people wait like yeah, people that haven't had the opportunity to play it, I think it's a it's a great move. Yeah. Now uh, I, they could start adding layers to you know the new Sony tiered system, kind of like Microsoft is doing with their Game Pass. Though they could start adding some of those things to PC in that way. I think they could do well in the future. It's going to take some time to catch up to Game Pass yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, but that could be their kind of first foray. Put some heavy hitters from sony on the pc yeah um, we and they did possibly see that. they've done what they've done god of war they'll be doing spider-man um the uncharted collection i think is on there uh 
I would predict with the new series that are coming out that Sony produced, like Last of Us, they should migrate those over when they're announcing, or once the shows are starting, at least. Yeah, the, the Last of Us remake was a big thing that was expected to be announced at this show, but it did not. I would definitely say it'll probably be announced at uh, State of... or uh, What the heck's the name of that? Summer Game Fest. That's what, that's what it's yeah. called. Yeah. Uh, some people are saying Heroes Battle Royale. So, like a Marvel speaking, Battle Royale? Yeah, maybe maybe so. So I have a couple of thoughts on something like that. Not a not a BR per se, but Daybreak Games. I know you mentioned it in the last show. So Daybreak, they they have uh, DC DCU right uh, online. Yes. And that game, I, I I saw that they recently scrapped Marvel Online. Right. They're yes, planning on doing kind of a it. similar iteration, and they canceled it, but why not partner and make that the same game like DC versus Marvel or something like that? It's already there. The I'm... game's already built out. You could kind of bring in a new fan I've base, player base. Always been shocked that uh, Marvel, especially DC is a revolving door yeah. of weird yeah. decisions, but, but Marvel, yeah. like they perfected the film industry. It's, they're, they perfected their approach. And with TV, I like. I would argue their approach to TV isn't like amazing, but they've definitely established themselves very, very, very well, uh, viewership wise. It's yeah. always surprised me that they haven't made a bigger effort to build the like the MCU gaming division. Like, yeah, and uh, but I think they should start with DCU. They should make a partnership and say, "Hey, we can help revitalize your game. The foundation's already there." Yeah, right? like. Instead of putting in all the resources to make a whole nother game, it's a win-win for both sides. Yeah. You know, that's expansions and new content. Um, you can totally revitalize the game. Because, you know, previous to that, they had, you know, City of Heroes and other games mm -hmm. that eventually became DCU. So it's not like it was always DC. <clears throat> it was, you know, you could have whatever kind of character that you wanted in the game. Yeah. Uh, I think that'd be the right play, is saying, hey, let's make a partnership on this particular thing. Uh, have a mass MMO that we just revitalize and bring a new uh, fan base. And do I think Daybreak's the right company to handle it? No, <laughs> they have, have to buy it out from Daybreak. I, I still play EverQuest, admittedly, from Daybreak, <laughs> and they they could do a better job with that game. So I, I totally I don't think that Daybreak else. is like in their last days. Like, oh yeah, I, I, they're gonna get I, bought and downsized, or just get shut down. Like, yeah, they're gonna get bought out. I wouldn't be surprised. Speaking of Sony, it was originally Sony yeah, Online Entertainment right. Games. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Sony reacquired them. I mean, maybe or at least for purchase the IP. Dance. They don't. Yeah. They don't really need. They don't really need to acquire them. They just need to get the IP. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they let them go <laughs> because games. they saw the writing on the wall that uh, you know things yeah. aren't going so well over here. But it's funny that it's still funny to me that Daybreak is the same company. You know. We talk EverQuest, but also like H1Z1, like basically like yeah. founded the battle royale genre. It's so so funny, which they yeah, also killed that game beyond belief and buried well, it ten times. Technically, they they separated the studios too, so it's Dark Paw that has EverQuest. Yeah, now. that's true. That's true. And so it's, I mean, still they did that with High Res too. Daybreak. High Res is technically like three different companies now. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if Sony said, "Hey, we're going to buy the IPs and shut it down." It would make sense. At least EverQuest uh, has the name carries weight still. Yeah. I was going to say, but DCU, I, I don't see them keeping Planet Side or. Yeah, uh, Planet Side is dead. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't see them keeping that. But they maybe tried DCU that new EverQuest. Planet Side Battle Royale, like, not very long ago, like, like uh, about a year ago. And they shut it down within like 30 days. It had like no player base. What It was like a supposed to be like a huge scale battle royale you know like because planet side that's what it's known for it's like 2000 player you know like battles or whatever and then they try to br and they couldn't fill like a single lobby with the number of players that the lobby could, <laughs> could oh hold. no wow that's terrible too bad um are you a warhammer 40k guy or warhammer uh, warhammer guy at all so yes but there's a caveat to that. I'm a Warhammer 40k person in real life. The games have been underwhelming to me. Like you're a space marine in real life? 
<laughs> like I have the board games. I have Warhammer Quest and and, oh, and yeah. Warhammer Forty K yeah. board games like that I'd play in real life. But the actual games like Total War Warhammer and mm -hmm. Warhammer Forty K games, they've been underwhelming. Yeah, there was but, two of them. So that yes they showed. and no. There's two like of them the, that they showed that were very well, three that are really promising, I think. Yeah, I like the board games. The actual games, not so much. Well, they got they last week they held a little conference. Uh, they showed a little bit bit more of Space Marine Two, which I think Space Marine the original was one of the better Warhammer 40k games yeah. for sure. And then uh, we got 40k Dark Tide, which is like the like the Warhammer Vermin Tide. It's like co-op shooter, Left 4 Dead style. Uh, that... So I didn't play Vermintide, and I've heard really good things about that one. So yeah. I've heard it's underrated. That that one I didn't play, but I need to go back and try it. And then my favorite of the bunch was uh, it's like a boomer shooter. It looks exactly like Doom, but it's Warhammer 40k, and it it, it looks like like the original Doom, like like pixelated. Like I think it looks great. I think it's called Bolt Gun. Looks Bolt really Gun. good. Yeah. Okay. Check that out if you get a chance. Uh, we have to clown on Sonic uh, and Sega a little bit. Did you see the new Sonic game? Tell me you saw uh, the gameplay. I did see some stuff about the new Sonic. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, but the thing is, I have to preface it with I've never really seen the hype of Sonic games, and that might be a hot take. Mm -hmm. Like no, even on Sega Genesis, I'm Sonic games are eh, to me. I never, I was never into it. So I have friends that say the same thing. So a new <laughs> Sonic game to me is like. I didn't care about Sonic in the first yeah. place, so I don't care about Sonic now. I like the character. It's the Sonic movie, I, I said this on the podcast, was probably the best movie that they've ever made. Mm -hmm. Or for a gaming movie. It's yeah. probably the best gaming movie to date that I can think of. Which is not saying a lot. The yeah. Gaming movies usually <laughs> maybe like five good terrible. ones, period, yeah. <laughs> but I, I was actually pleasantly surprised when I watched Sonic. I was like, it's actually pretty good. Uh, most gaming movies are, are terrible. Um. The new, the new game, Sonic Frontiers, which is supposed to release this fall. I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to judge a book by the cover and say it's not going to be good. But, like, it looks like a really weird mix of ideas. It's, like, open world. It almost looks like they took the Zeta Halo from Halo Infinite, dropped Sonic on it, and they're like, okay, yep, this is good. Like, the music is, like, very tranquil, like, piano music. So you've got, like, Sonic, who's supposed to be about, like going super fast and you know like kind of like speed and chaos and it, it's like exploring this Elevator wide open music. empty <laughs> uh yeah like this wide open empty like mountainous area with like a little bit of piano playing in the background <laughs> it's just weird like it reminded me more of like shadows of the colossus which was an underrated game uh but like with sonic in it i was i was just I mean, like I, so confused i like the characters in sonic like you know yeah yeah, I mean, I've always liked the, the characters and stuff like that, but just the gameplay for me, you know, hit or miss. But I, I'm not mad about them making a new Sonic game because I think it, it's nice to have some more family friendly games out there because there's not yeah. a whole lot of them nowadays, yeah. <laughs> to be quite honest. So. And I do think they need to try something, something new for 3D Sonic. They've never, they've really never nailed 3D Sonic. Like nothing that they've tried has really stuck. 2D Sonic has been. You know, they're from the get go, pretty iconic, like easy formula. They've got that I'm just down. Trying to, but... I'm trying to think how they're going to make that work with 3D, though, because you can't just, you know, be going on all these tracks collecting rings. It's not going to be the same. That's what I mean. It's like, not going to. It's not going to be the same. What's What's the thrill? I know? mean, um, they're going to have to make it kind of like Mario or something. Honestly, I uh, like it, open world is going to be tough. It's going to have to be like level or world base somehow yeah like maybe maybe they take the route of uh what was that game recently really good game uh, it just uh and i have it names just slipped my tongue greek mythology uh kind of like breath of the wild but really funny genshin impact no 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 no, no. it's uh man like breath of the wild but funny yeah like hilarious um i have it on my playstation but i can't it's slipping my tongue oh let's see um, Sonic Adventure was a good time. <laughs> Immortals Phoenix Rising, that's what it is. Oh, Immortals yeah, Phoenix yeah. Rising. I didn't play it, but I, I know Great of it. Great game. Really? Uh, 
Yeah, it's actually really good. Ubisoft but made it, I, so I'm shocked so, by that statement. No, it's actually, it's actually good. really good. So, Immortals Phoenix Rising, what they do is, it is open world, however, um, there's certain parts where you have to kind of go down uh, to another level, like another world. So, like, think of, you know, in Mario, when you go down the, the, the tunnel or the pipe or whatever. Yeah. And you, it's basically like that. So, I, I could see them doing that with Sonic, where it's like, at cert, it's open world, but now you go into a level and you're doing the rings thing or whatever. That's the only thing I can think of. I really but, just want a Sanic game, well, no, we'll to see. be honest with you. Like, Sanic, like yeah. the heart. Like the, <laughs> I was actually thinking that. That would be hilarious. It's like a, they should do it like the style like the old Beavis and Butthead games. Yeah. But with Sanic. Yeah. With Sanic. T- anything. Like, if you make like a Sanic game, hilarious. I'm buying it. Like, I don't care just, even what the game just, is. It would just be a great meme game. Just make yeah, it like exactly. the old school Beavis and Butthead or the Simpsons <laughs> or something. Yeah. But with Sanic. There was actually like, some like good, like, I remember playing a Simpsons game like when I was like 10 years old and I thought it was like great. There was like an itchy and scratchy game that I loved for like Super NES or something like that. Like just how did this game even get made in retrospect? It's like a Krusty the Clown game, but yeah. Sanic. Yeah, there you just, go. Like, there you go, Sanic. Just like saying all this really funny. stupid stuff. Uh, All right, I think our special guest is ready. Should we try to uh get him on? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, should we do an intermission or we just do it live? I mean, what do you, what do you think? Um, depends. Is he on chat? I, is he in chat? I don't know if he's in chat. I mean, I can, if you want to try to get him on the call, I can kind of talk about some stuff for a minute. <clears throat> okay. Solo. If you need Let's something see. different, just let me know. Oh, no, oh, Roran's there. He's in chat. <laughs> there we go. Is he, he going to break everything on the wow, screen? Wow, watch him say no. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, boom, it's boom, gonna break boom. everything for sure, but I can fix it. He broke everything, <clears throat> <laughs> right? It's a it's a wild roar. Oh, wild yeah. wild roar appears. Yeah. All right, you said no cams, right? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> cams is fine. <laughs> Look at this colorful setup. Yeah, I'm gonna. Do I have to change the colors, or is this good? No, no, it looks good. It's on brand. Maybe get get some more purple <laughs> in the background. Maybe you guys will be able to some brand. lights or something for the back. Yeah. <laughs> Did that work? Or I think you got to fix. Yeah, Mayor's. Yeah, I got to fix everything. See, I wouldn't have. Normally, more. I wouldn't even have a background, so you'd be able to see my PC. But uh, it was laundry day, and I wasn't planning to co-host today, so I was like, <laughs> "Well, I got all the stuff on my bed that I need to fold." So let me put up this background. Can you guys hear me good? I'm just. You're very clear. Me. Mm-hmm. You you only sound like a like you're on the radio right now, like so you're, you're running a show. Like twenty dollar <laughs> mic. Your mic's twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah. I'm just well, a good Rorn, guy. So Roran is just Maz two point because that's what it looks like on the stream right now. You're yeah yeah. <laughs> the clone Maz is. I don't know what's going on. We got a clone. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist. Plot twist. <laughs> Roran is just my twin. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, except for he's got more hair than me. Well, I was gonna say if I, but if I, I don't know if I shave my head, we might look a little similar. I'd have to thin good. out my beard a little bit. I think we're good now. He's he's more jacked than me, though. I have to work out a little more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, Roran, say hello to everybody. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Matt, do you want to do you go, do you want to do the honors or do you want to drop me to I'll, introduce you know, or? I'll let him introduce. Really? He can introduce himself if he wants, and then then we can kind of say why he's here. Okay. It's a plot twist. You're actually the co- the host. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> All right. Plot twist. You're coming on to replace me. Peace. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. So you want me to go on about uh, why we're here yeah, today? Just, I guess. Uh, well, you can say a little bit about yourself, and uh, you know what kind of stuff you do in gaming and whatever, and what games that you you're passionate about, and then we'll get to the yeah, actually uh, the i started it on here. xbox <laughs> which was kind of funny i think a lot of people did started on xbox um started kind of mostly competitively playing in call of duty didn't really get noticed until like black ops 4 which was nice and then that was just a whole fiasco of like being doxxed every day and ddos <laughs> and <laughs> everybody anytime you get a kill you're a cheater 
um but uh that was fun and it hit a couple uh world records in that i don't know if i still hold them because that game's still going strong on console though but uh that was always one of my favorite and then transition from that right into hyperscape which was rip you know yeah still to this day (laughs) like i I would play that it was way underrated just a few people in the lobbies that's one i did oh yeah i didn't ever play i need to go and well I might have missed out on that boat, but I never played that one. The problem with hyperscape again was the (laughs) The skill. (laughs) The skill floor was uh, too high for most people. It was an amazing game. The skill ceiling was so high, but the skill floor was also pretty high. Is that kind of like? Would that be like Quake Champions? A new a new player. Uh, I mean, similar situation at least. It was more fast paced. Yeah. 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 I know it was more fast paced. But like a yeah, new player like hopping that. on Quake Champions will last about two matches and then yes. they never play the game again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> they get matched up with just people that are disgusting. The older you are, the better like you're at Quake. That's the way the yeah, world that's, works. That's, that's facts. That is how it works. If you, if you played the original Unreal Tournament, you might be decent at Quake. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, uh, Hyperscape is definitely one of my favorite. I think I actually... <laughs> If I looked it up on Tracker right now under my old name, which was actually Reptares, <laughs> I don't know if Mayor remembers that from when I came to Splitgate, but I think I do. That was my other name. I don't think I knew it was you, um, though. Yeah, now that the game's done, I guess I'll forever hold the number one Canadian spot. <laughs> there you go. So I, I would beat any of you on Xbox at Fusion Frenzy, though. I don't think I played it. <laughs> you can have that Fusion one. Frenzy? <laughs> but I, I got to interrupt Roaring here. I just got to tell this story. So back in the day of Halo CE Lands, you know, that, was, that was all we had. We didn't have Xbox Live yet. Me and a bunch of our friends got together. You know, you brought your little brother and whatever, so you could have enough players, so more players that'll land, the better. One of our friend's little brothers was there at the Halo CE Land, and he was like the cannon fodder. He was the one that we were all like all looking for because he was like the free kill. So at one point, we hadn't seen him for like quite a while. We're all going like, where's Joel? Where's Joel? Like none of us had killed him. So like I got up from my TV and I went and I looked at his screen and he was playing Fusion Frenzy by himself in the middle of this Halo land <laughs> because he just got trashed so hard. Man, I'm going to have to play it. Can you still play it? Yeah, if you have it, you can still play it on Xbox. That's a single player. I mean, it's not single player, but it's not online. So oh, okay. a multiplayer gotcha. uh, split screen stuff, but uh, not online. So you can play it and nice that's, that's awesome good stuff yeah, they need to bring it back that game is pretty fun it was it was yeah, like I, one I'm of the original part one of the original party games yeah oh, okay so, so yeah uh, original party game to me is um mario <laughs> it was basically xbox's <laughs> attempt to make mario a mario party. party yeah that's what it yeah. was that's so uh, you're the second person that we've had on a nemesis show that called it mario so first one was Trinity. Trinity. <laughs> that game. <laughs> now you Mario. So I say Mario. What do you, Mayor? What do you say? Uh, I I say Mario, but I went to high school with somebody who used to say Mario and Sergio. Not not even Every, Luigi. So, so we're two for two on Canadians calling it Mario or Mario. So I guess yeah, that's a, a, a. It's making an A sound. If it was oh. Mario, wouldn't it be like M A U R I O? I mean, Maurice, it you, would have a U in it. You say syrup or syrup? Syrup. Like syrup? Like Syria? Like the country Syria? I don't know. What is this about? Anyways, I just escaped dead. Good point. <laughs> Continue, Roar. <laughs> All right, that's the our show, guys. Dead. We're out of time. Right. You can't Please. play it anymore. It's completely gone. So what are you um, playing now, Roar? had to try and find a game just as fast as that went through quite a few couldn't find anything right like it even war zones just not that pace settled on Splitgate, and that was actually before the servers were down and hyperscape i just couldn't get any games in it and just loved how fast paced it is and just you know like the mechanics are just so advanced but a simple player can still have fun with them i feel like it's pretty well balanced like if you get a couple of people you know that or just have good aim, but they're not necessarily portalers. They can still take down a player, if, like a top player, if they're going to get enough shots. No, so that it. was basically me and Mayor the other day when we played with you. <laughs> so, yeah, like our portaling was nowhere near you, but we can still shoot. We can shoot. Yeah, back. at a certain point, you're going to have to learn how to portal. But you know, to start off, I feel like that's why it's keeping its main player base because it's it's not too hard. And the matchmaking, from what I see watching other people's streams, is 
they do pretty good mixing the bots in early on. So people are getting easier lobbies and, you know, by the time they hit level 50 and they're feeling pretty good and then keep playing and they're kind of hooked, hopefully. And then they get into ranked. <laughs> so for those of you who haven't played Splitgate, uh, Splitgate is basically a cross between Portal and Halo. Halo gameplay, but you get to do portals. And some of you suck at portals like me. Uh, and you like the Halo gameplay. Uh, some people are good at the portal part and can't shoot back, and some people like Roran can do the best of both worlds. Um, but the reason that we brought Roran on today is not only is he an MVP or a partner creator with Splitgate, he's also the captain of the new Nemesis Splitgate team. So we are officially uh, jumping into Splitgate and trying to hopefully in the next couple seasons get into the Splitgate Pro Series uh, alongside some of those big names in Splitgate. So uh, we have not been in esports for a while. We kind of slowed down with the pandemic and everything and trying to get back into the full swing of esports here with hopefully the first of many teams, but definitely this will be one of our flagship, if not the flagship teams for the foreseeable future. So I'm pretty excited. So, so you know, I'm excited to grow too with for Nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be nice too because we pick some. Uh, we pick some. I feel like more mature members of the Splitgate community that can grow together that aren't gonna, you know, get mad. Because a lot of these teams, people don't realize, even these pro teams that they picked up, some of them are not not to a fault, but 16, 17, 18. You know, we got some more like I think not not docs anybody, but anywhere from twenty plus to. You know, I think 30, 31. Yeah. So. Well, the good thing about that is that, uh, one, you know, with the younger crowd, I know because I've, I've been in esports since I was 13, right? So being on the competitive side, the management side, the ownership side, a lot of times the younger the team, the tendency to kind of blow the team up with, you know, a, a loss or two uh, increases. As you get older, yeah. you understand losing is part of getting better. It's part of the process. Uh, but when you're young and all you've known is success, sometimes those first couple losses, you you have a, dis, a different mindset. You're like, hey, this isn't working out. We need to change this player or this player. Or we need to do this. Uh, and that's not always the case because, yeah. you know, a lot of those losses are things that are preventable um, and you can get learning better. In the next, yeah, it's a learning experience. And the next time you're not going to lose the same way. Yeah. Um, and so it's good in those instances to have a more mature team that's going to stick together and get better, uh, build that chemistry over time instead of just changing pieces every time that you run into an obstacle. Yeah. And that's what a lot of the split gate teams are doing and even had done even right up to SPS is dropping members because maybe they didn't get along or raid quit or something, but like they're not focusing on just working together. They're all there for the quick win. And, you know, maybe we don't win this season, maybe it doesn't happen, but we competed and we learned as a team and then, next time comes around we're going to be ready for it because this was a little you know it, it's all happened pretty quick we've got a few practices in and we're hoping to play tonight after um the podcast and we got a tournament tomorrow and then on the 10th i guess <laughs> so it didn't really give us a whole lot of time for planning but i think we're uh, doing the best we can right now and it's only going to get better so that yeah, was going to be yeah. my question Sorry, you want to go, Mazer? No, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, and we're going to ride that train because yeah, I had the event this weekend, and uh, our first community night is more than likely going to be this weekend, uh, Friday, the same day that you're starting the tournament uh, in Split Gate. So probably Striver is going to head that up this weekend so we can kind of build on the buzz, maybe get some new viewers from the community into the game that maybe haven't played it yet uh, and just kind of build on the hype. Because what we want to do at Nemesis is we're not just getting into a game to get into the game. We're not trying to do it as like a trend uh, um, and just to compete. We really want to invest in the games that we're in too on a, on a personal level. So if we're not engaging with the game in the community uh, and trying to involve ourselves on the ground floor, then look, there's no point to get in, in my opinion. Because um, yeah. we're not in it for any money. We're not in it for fame. Maybe some glory because we want to win because <laughs> yeah. we're pretty competitive. But I really want us to be in these... Uh, I don't want to say Splitgate's not a, a, a mainstream game or anything like that, but um, in these smaller communities, we want to be involved in those types of games where we can really just engage with everybody that's in it and involved in it, some of these niche things. Um, and that's what I'm passionate about. It's like, hey, let's get into all these games that people aren't talking about and let's kind of bring it to the forefront. 
Yeah, and gaining good exposure too. Like um, when Split Gate blew up last time, there was a lot of people that you know we know personally. You know, whether it be me straight for anybody in the Split Gate community, you know, we played daily with these guys, and then they just blew up to a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand views, and just woke up the next morning to you know fifteen thousand followers. Just it blows up overnight. It can happen again. And with the state of a, a game that has similar gunplay, that I won't say any names, <laughs> this yeah. is a good time for a split gate to kind of jump in. Uh, I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some players fall off of uh, pro Halo rosters and fall into split gate. Uh, now, money talks, obviously, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some Halo players <laughs> defect and go over to split gate. Yeah. And that some of them already are. Like the last tournament that uh, was held was just a couple of days ago. It was hosted by Arash and another Halo player. So, you know, they're already, they've played this game. They know it's all here. They're probably ready for a switch and they've been dipping their feet in. So, Roran, can you tell us um, who are the members of Nemesis Splitgate? And then, uh, I, know, I know you mentioned a couple things, but like if people are out there wondering like, okay, where can I... Where will I be able to, you know, see Nemesis Splitgate? Or where, what should I be looking for from Nemesis Splitgate? Tell us a little bit about all that. Yeah, no, I, I would imagine we're going to, well, Maz already can see every upcoming tournament and everything that's signed up for now. But we'll definitely let him know when anything's popping up. And then he may get that on the Twitter and you know, we'll be posting yeah. it as well. So what we'll probably do is we'll work out some schedule to uh, either do some dual streams or we'll feature them on their own channels. Or in some cases, maybe we'll have it on the Nemesis channel. We have to f flesh those things out. Um, it's still kind of the early days. It definitely is going to be streamed, though, um, whether that's on our channel or uh, Roran or, or one of the teammates is streaming it. So you'll definitely be able to see some of the gameplay for these tournaments that are coming up. Um I don't know if it's just the camera, the way it's angled, but your PC looks massive, and some people are wondering, <laughs> what kind of PC is that? <laughs> it is massive. <laughs> I, I custom built the case. <laughs> like, it's, uh, I'm just like, like it looks like feet. twice the size of, of my PC that's right next to me, yeah. and I'm just like, what is that? It's like three feet wide by, I mean, it's off the ground here, but I guess in total, maybe like seven feet off the ground. So you basically have two or three ones. PCs in one. I right put there. two streaming PC and gaming PC. Gotcha. In the yeah. same case, you get a few frames yeah, out of that case. thing. <laughs> quite, just a little bit. He's probably yeah. only only max sixty frames. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sixty yeah. frames. Yeah, yeah. I, I I play on PlayStation. I don't even use this thing over here. Yeah, yeah. he's play, like, that's I've got I've got PC ten ten fans, ten fans in there to cool it down. But there's twenty two. You're kidding me. No, is there really twenty two yeah. fans in there? Yeah, there is. Oh my god, they I only have cool. four. It can run yeah, Crisis. Yeah, you're gonna overheat, dude. Yeah, it can yeah. run Crisis on on full specs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a mining build without the mining. Yeah. Right? He's, he's he's got <laughs> he's gotten three Bitcoin since we've been sitting here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, where where was I? Now I lost my train. Who are, you, who are your team? Oh, yeah, you we're, were talking about the teammates. Okay, yeah, teammates. yeah. So we're gonna have me, the anchor. You know. <laughs> Hold, holding everybody where they gotta be not dragging them down you know <laughs> then we got the Corey htx in chat he's a resident controller demon for the main team we got hawk 52 in the chat also an og um i think he might have been a semi-pro champion as well maybe he could correct me on that one but i know jarenic is and jarenic's on the team and he's a long time split gay player and a semi-pro champion and we're talking a lot of us correct me if i'm wrong have play this game you know since it was like portal wars i'm there with you and yeah exactly whether it was on or off or whatever i, and I then we started got, playing it uh, last year so i'm way behind you guys <laughs> yeah and then we got the die limitless um he's one of our subs but also just a crazy controller player super good and he also streams as well um you know it uh, it's great to have a sub that's going to be just as good as a main roster so it's trying to get everybody to keep playing together because I think it's going to work out well with a more mature squad. There'd be a lot of ease of pulling members in and out if we have to. And then uh, Strifer, Sal Strifer, you're, you're one and only. Yeah, so Strifer, if then. you don't know, he's also a management at Nemesis. Um, so he's going to be taking on kind of an expanded role uh, helping 
with this team as far as managing as well. Um, but he's also pretty cracked. Um, I, I always give Stryfer a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of crap. Cause I, I, I ended up going against him in a match in split gate and my team won. <laughs> so no I always hold that against him. I'm like, I want to know against you, but I've watched him play and I, for 100%, he's better than me at the game, but I'm still going to hold on to that until we meet again. Um, I'm one to know against uh, Striker, but he's he's cracked. Yeah, he's really good too. I I mean, the, I think the only one I'm missing is a uh, kill school, which is also another sub, but a valuable coach. Man, this guy is like when Splitgate blew up, his streams were taken off, and he was just so good. He was playing on like he was one of the best players I think on, that was on Rock. So same with the uh, Jarenik, but people just got to visually see kill school, and then it would be like. Yo, Kill School, how do I get better? How do I get better? And I tell everybody this now. I'm like, oh, just go ask Kill School. He'll tell you to hit all your shots in Portal. Like, that was. I, I was watching. <laughs> this is why he's say, head coach, man. I was going to say, watching you Portal was was a work of art. Me, me and Mayor were dying every five seconds, and we're just watching you like, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was the potential. Like, learned from Kill School. Like, the potential that you can have in this game, and I'm not anywhere near that. <laughs> yeah, and and I I want to get him playing as much as we can, but he is a busy guy, so he's gonna be there for vod reviews and uh you know just a little peek in any corners. But the cool thing is, is you know we do have Jarenik and we do have Hawk. I mean, just old players that have played this game and know every single portal wall that maybe a new team doesn't. So it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, school taught me how to hit my shots and grow a mustache. <laughs> so one thing that we hope to do uh here in the near future as well is um for those of you that may not be familiar with split gate or just getting into it or trying to get better like me because i can't portal to save my life um we're hoping to um to produce some content trying to help you become better at those things so get better at the game maybe have some more map awareness get better at the portaling kind of mastering that um so we're going to work with pretty closely with the team to try to get some YouTube series together um, so you can become uh, I, I can't say you're going to be as good as Roran and the, and the squad but you could do your best impression uh, by watching some of those videos and getting some tips and pointers from these guys yeah we'll be coming out of them with teamwork is going to be the biggest thing because there's a lot of good players man but it's just going to be beating their chemistry is going to be the thing and you can see, already see that in the pro league there's Maybe. there's te there's teams that were first picked that just aren't performing like what did you? So I was gonna say. Shooting. What did you make of the the Splitgate Pro Series? Had a big weekend this past weekend. What did you take away from that this weekend, Roran? Because this was the first um, time that a lot of these big orgs were have been involved. There was well, uh, obviously they're, they're and... not picking up the chemistry though. They're picking up. To, they're, they're trying to pick up the top teams, mm -hmm. which is a. Uh, I think I even seen that just from one of the T1 boys. I think they kind of separated him from his duo just because he technically wasn't better. But uh, I could I could be wrong. I'm just I think I seen that just with Twitter and uh, some of the boys just from knowing them to the grapevine. But the you know maybe when they would have been better off to take the duo, just because you know what I mean. Just mm -hmm. because someone's lacking doesn't mean they're not helping that person perform. Yeah, so. and sometimes it's the intangibles, right? When you build up so so much chemistry with one person, you know what they're gonna <clears> do before they even say anything, or you there some th some of those things you can't replace. When you've been playing together for so long, you just have those things that you know that the other person's going to do, uh, that in-game knowledge. And I've had that in gaming and competing, and I've even had that in a professional life, too. Yeah, they help you do I'm that, working yeah. on a project or working on something with somebody at work, and I'm like, this person, I don't even have to tell them. I know that this is their strength, this is my strength, and we're just kind of doing this beautiful weave, and we get the project done without even minimal communication. So it's 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 nice. Um, and when you have that kind of chemistry in, in gaming, uh, that is hard to replicate. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's why I kind of think I'm seeing the, uh, it is, it's interesting to see it. it and I, I don't know if a lot of gaming orgs probably do that. You know, they, they just pick up the numbers instead of actually picking up the, uh, yeah, you know, maybe so, the format that always played together. Yeah. So I, I do want to touch on that a little bit just because that's the truth. I mean, a lot of times now, uh, esports has gotten to a point where it's not about the placements anymore. Really, it's more about the viewership numbers and the profitability and the margins, right? Like, and if you kind of go back, yeah, <laughs> hundred thieves yeah. and stuff like that. So you go, you go back like 
five or six years even, uh, really before all of these uh, millionaires and NFL players and NBA teams and stuff started getting involved in the space. Nothing wrong with it. It's what we needed to kind of get to the next level. But before that, uh, you picked up players based on performance and you wanted to have the best team and compete and get the top placements. Now it's more influencer based, right? Cause it's like, okay, yeah. what players are more marketable? Who has already has a, a following, you know, who can we build content around? Uh, and it's, it's going less <clears throat> away from, okay. Competition is cause you're like, we have a shot to contend with a, a lot of different groups of players, but what players can we actually market? And yeah. that's kind of the way that it's going right now. And so there are teams in a lot of games. I wouldn't say all of them. Like I, I can't see some team being built in a MOBA to take down some of the top MOBA teams. Like that's probably not going to happen, but I can see it in, in shooting games where there might be some teams on the amateur circuit that could run the table, but because they don't, maybe they don't stream or they don't have a following. They're yeah. not marketable. Um, they're not going to get that chance. Yeah, that was what was actually great about the Splitgate series is I think they just you know went to Endo to the devs and said who should we have, and I, I think that was the great thing is like you're seeing a lot of people with, you know that this is their first time even playing a competitive game and then they get picked up to a tier one orc like it's pretty surreal for them I would imagine. Oh yeah, definitely because it's one of those niche like, and they went about it the right way like like. And Halo, honestly, Halo did the same thing, right? Like they did everything behind the scenes, talked to these organizations and said, hey, we need to have some kind of uh, a, a handful of teams that we're working with at launch and this and this and this. I know it's technically not launch for Splitgate per se, but I like that. It kind of builds that mysterious thing. Hey, they're working on stuff behind the scenes that we, we've we only gotten to see a little glimpse of. Um, and I re it's really exciting to see big names in a small in a smaller game. I think yeah. that's one of the things that's always been exciting uh, for me. Like from the very first time I played Splitgate, like and Roar or anybody else might be able to, you know, say that they ha experienced the same thing. Like I knew the second I played it, like this was this game was something special. Like the first time I played yeah. Splitgate, like half of the maps didn't have textures yet. It was like block out maps with like portal portal walls and stuff, and like. Once you see the gameplay mechanics like start clicking with you, you're like, this game is genius and like it has so much potential. And, you know, for forever, you know, like and it, the game's blown up, like literally blown up like twice now. And like everybody would always tell me, like, you know, like nobody plays this game, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. Roaring now, every Splitgate pro has heard this, you know, like, why do you play this game? And it's like, yeah, because it's so freaking good. And like, and the community. Yeah, the community is, is awesome. Unreal. But like, the game, even though it has already blown up like like twice, like it still hasn't realized realized like even half of its potential. It still has so much room for yeah. growth because of the positive community, so the skill gap, um, the the pro series. Like this game has so much room for for expansion, and it's really yeah. exciting. I think in Royal what Spain's what other game. game do you know that's in season two beta that's having these huge cash tourneys? You know yeah. what I mean. Full, full not, series not very many but at the same time like there's so much room to grow and it it really does start with a uh, a dev team that's willing to really ingrain themselves and involve themselves with the community because you see with a lot of games that they're very disconnected from their community mm -hmm. and i don't feel that with split Gate. i feel like they're really you know in tune with what's going on in the community and want the community to be a part of it yeah i think i think part of that too is like it's Splitgate is really like truly like a feel good story to me. Like it's a game that was made by like yeah. literally four people to start, and like you know, they're very open about it. Like they almost went out of business like time and time again. Like they, but they did everything they could to like you know keep this game going, keep making more maps, keep keep holding community tournaments and and play play nights and so on. And then for the second time, the game explodes because people realize like holy crap, this game is so good. And then they get hundreds of millions of dollars of investment. And that's why it's like obvious the game has such a bright future because now they have like hundreds of millions of dollars to expand this game that was originally made by four people on a shoestring yeah. budget. And depending on how big they want to go, I can't wait to see where that, you know, uh, rolls over into 1047. 
Yeah. Like I'm expecting big things from them as well in the next five years. I know they got to, they want this to be triple A and they have, maybe, maybe it can uh, have some, some gameplay like hyperscape. Cause we played some game modes the other day that were very fast paced. Like you moved (laughs) a lot faster. I could see where they go some hyper speed in some of the game modes where it's a little bit different or a new game completely is what I was thinking. Right. 1047. I know the funding was for split gig, but eventually that's got to roll over. To where the point where they have enough money to keep going with 1047. Yeah, Roaring. they could probably make another game, but I, I kind of want to see them expand the game modes even more. Like I, oh, I, I try to, they, they, they. But I'm thinking like I'm thinking back to like old school like Counter Strike Source, right? I still prefer Source over CS:GO, right? Because CS:GO for me is just it's one one game mode. But Source, you had all these other things that you could do with the game, uh, and I I could see that with Split Gate because the the gameplay is there. The mechanics are actually really simple, but they're, they can be complex at the same time. Cause like yeah. you can, even with the portals, you can play in different ways. Yeah. You can be a demon just going to the portals left and right, or you can strategically place them and kind of be more <clears> stationary. <throat> like there's different ways to play yeah. the game. Um, and so I, I can see a lot of potential with that. Yeah. And, and a lot of top players, what they'll mostly do is the portal like a demon to mostly get away or to heal up. And you see a lot of players playing pretty slow, like Tanner J Fox. He plays fairly slow on a lower sense, but you, the portal plays that he'll make and just outplay people are kind of unique to watch. And I kind of can't wait to see him get back into the scene. Really, should be fun. I've seen him online. He's on my friends list. It's kind of scary. <laughs> see where he goes. That's I kind of I kind of like that the uh, Nemesis Splitgate team is a little bit more mature, like you said too, because that split gate is like that thinking man's game right whereas like mechanical skills important you know like hitting those headshots yeah. with the sniper hitting those railgun shots and so on that's important but portals change the way you move around the map they change the way you position so it's not just about mechanical skill so it is about yeah. that like smart decision making and you know i know when oh, yeah, i was a kid seen... my aim was great you know but i was like an idiot because i was just running <laughs> at everybody in halo 2 just you know running, running straight yeah, at them you know just running and, you learn with experience that you know it's not always yeah. about mechanical skill it's super it's just like that so if you guys remember maz remember when i was trying to send you on takedown when we were playing together but i obviously <laughs> that made no sense to you um <laughs> well I, if, I, I, you can you, play each other's portals did, yeah no i knew that but the, the <clears> thing <throat> is when you were trying to send me i didn't know which which character you were i didn't know if you were beside yeah, me or no. above me or and what, that's and the cool like, thing oh. about playing together right is we know well like you'll nod at each other you'll 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 say what position you're starting in which is really cool and uh, sometimes the closest way like i might not be able to get the shotgun but i might be able to send you to shotgun if that makes sense i yeah. can hit one portal and then hit the next portal up to you because I maybe don't have a portal wall close to me, so it's, it's really cool. The plays you can make are insane, and the teamwork is just incredible. I'm I'm impressed. Like I even said when we were playing the other day, I'm impressed that they can seamlessly have the portals working. Because I gotta imagine that's gotta be coding nightmare for it to work yeah. seamless when you're portaling constantly. Not not just you, but all the players in the game at the same time. I I don't know how what kind of wizardry they had <laughs> to come up with that, but that's gotta be a pain in the ass on the coding end. <laughs> I would imagine. I, uh, you know, going back to what you were saying, Maz, and what Roran was saying about 1047 is, is I do think, yeah, like what they do in the next five years is going to be even five to 10 years. is going to be really interesting because Splitgate is definitely here to stay. And I know Cardinal, the, the director of Splitgate has said, uh, I don't know if they'll ever do this game, but he says he has an idea, like a battle royale idea. Um, but I've Roran, if you want to join me on the, in on this and support me in this endeavor, uh, I, I messaged I messaged Endo and I told him that I I have the idea for their second game and it will take less resources than uh, Splitgate hmm. to make. So uh, if you wanna if you wanna go in on me with me on that, uh, we you and me can lead the way on that. I got a great idea for him. I've already okay. been bugging him. I've been sending him bugs <laughs> i'm so sorry endo for all these pings yeah man. probably not even the right person i know it's always to. endo too that's who i message to like endo, dude i got the this game's idea fucking broken uh, endo's their community endo. manager for those of you who don't know really good guy he probably he probably made a secondary account and he doesn't even look at the old account anymore just because he gets so many problems yeah the I, game's I'm... broken call endo this isn't working call endo totally um too like 
like everybody's been saying too like the the developers like when you talk to them when you meet them like they're so passionate about this game and they're they're just like normal people that you can literally just like be friends with like i i've known mm-hmm. i don't know Roran knows a ton of them probably better than i do but um it, it's just like when you talk to them it's so obvious that like they care so much about the game the community the players and that's why i think splitgate is gonna go far and i'm, I'm super psyched to have nemesis in the in the split gate arena um because it's just yeah. really exciting you know it's a good game they play the game i ran into cardinal yesterday and ranked yeah like, you, if you get a problem like the same thing is like if you're making a product and you don't enjoy the product then it's not a good product yeah like so if you're not he I, I, that's how i feel well. like <laughs> World of I, I i get it i get it for big companies right where you have people that are contracted for a certain time or whatever, and maybe they're just there for a paycheck and they're not really that passionate. But when you have a small studio, if they're not playing the game, then something's wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you can't enjoy the game that you're creating, then you're probably creating the wrong game. They've uh, already proved it just for uh, that last little thing they did. And then they, they went in with a bunch of, they went in with Lyric from Lumosity and the other guys and they just, you know, they don't even play the game a lot and they still went in and just destroyed some top tier aim. It was kind of fun to watch. Shiv Endo too. would just keep them, man. Yeah, Shiv. Like Shiv. Endo would just momentum punch him the whole time. I saw that. <laughs> it's pretty you, great. Like you have to stop spectating Endo, Bonsai Bros, because he's just embarrassing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. It's it's been really great too to see uh 1047 as the game has grown and as the studio has grown. They have literally hired like a lot of the new hires that they have made over the past years. The game has grown have been like their own, like their own pros and their own community members yeah. who have just like grinded the game and dedicated, have been active in the discord since day one. Those people are now working on the game. And it's like, that's, that's just like such a feel good story. Like they didn't go out and hire, you know, somebody from, from three, four, three or from naughty dog or whatever, you know, they're hiring people who they know, like, they're they're here for this game yeah. and they and they're here for this community and that's just been awesome to see as well and that's the crazy thing about the internet is you have some crazy talented people that maybe don't even know how talented they are and uh someone like for example tanner trees who's getting a bit of a momentum with them i don't know if they're actually using his gun skins in the game yet but they freaking should be yes um nobody knew until i don't even feel like you know, a couple months ago when he just started popping out these skins, he made them um, me for the old org I used to run. He made us custom Lux skins and, you know, he made me custom Roran skin with the mutant logo on it and everything. And it's just the renderings he's able to do. It just looks like it should be in the game. Yeah, I agree. And you get some talented community members just that you don't even know or they don't even know. And the, uh, the split gate map editor too. A lot of people don't know that, yeah. you know, like people are still waiting for forge in halo infinite. And that's a big point of contention is that Halo Infinite doesn't have a map editor yet. Uh, Splitgate has a map editor, and they just updated it this season. They added new features, and people make some crazy stuff. Uh, they've remade virtually every Halo map uh, in Splitgate with the map editor. I don't know, Roran, if you have any favorites to things that you've seen from the map editor. Um, I was told last night while I was streaming that somebody already made a nuke town. So there you I mean, go. Like, I would imagine there's many COD replicas as well. So yeah. Just- pretty cool it's endless content right there the map editors are yeah. pretty insane yeah pretty cool as looks like he's feverishly working on something yeah <laughs> he's or he's checking needed. his tinder profile i don't know no, I, <laughs> I am feverishly no i i am getting the tweet ready so we can announce on socials after the show <laughs> he's got a touch uh, screen so he's nemesis splitgate logo oh, is sweet by the way i've seen it and it's, it's sweet so, at least yeah, the announcement I'm graphic. Get, I'm just getting the tweet ready for <laughs> the Nemesis Twitter and the socials so we can uh, post about it after the show. Everybody yeah. absolutely needs to like and retweet the tweet when it goes out, too. Everybody in chat. Then it's official. Then we get our $200,000 signing bonus, and <laughs> we're good to go. <laughs> what? So we need 400,000 uh, Twitch subs to come up with yeah, that. Like right now. 400,000 Twitch subs right now. or I'm Somebody get bankrupt. Somebody hit those 400k <laughs> gifted real quick. Oh, God. <clears throat> you know, do you ask for a Lambo too, Roran? I would. No, he's giving me a Tesla. Oh. 
Fuck that. The rest of the guys are getting Sorry. Corollas. It was either we all got Lambos. Corollas. Or I got one of the nicest Teslas and they got Corollas. So we kind of went that way with it. You also lift some pretty heavy stuff, don't you, Ron? Yeah, I picked up a few things. Yeah. Do you think, <laughs> do, you, do you believe in that like link between like, like, uh, like esports and like, uh, weightlifting? That, that is good for you? Yeah. That there's, that there's like a shared, like, you know, like, I mean, it's good for your health, obviously, to work out in general, period. But like in, in gaming or, or competition, esports, like, do you think that like weightlifting and athleticism has a, if there's a link there? I feel like you would have to time your days almost like you do. Like you couldn't do two leg days in a row or you wouldn't be able to walk. Like we should just I never do leg day period, do, but. but if I go do deadlifts, like when I'm picking up 500 plus pounds, it starts to put a bit of strain on like your forearms and your tendons. I can feel it now. I don't know if it's age, but I feel like that's not good, but maybe, well, maybe well, it's working you, for you. You don't, yeah, you don't have problems. Kind of. <laughs> well you're insane at split gate and you deadlift like 500 pounds so <laughs> they cry well maybe maybe there is a correlation maybe we're on to some Corey's pretty fit too it's, it's, you know, it's looks like he's fit that, I, I have heard that there's it's been studied a few times <laughs> and it, it's obviously not like a one-way street it's not like it's like the the, the you know the, the golden pill or something but like it's uh it's discipline you know it's repetition it's building habits of you know, yeah, maybe pushing yourself beyond your, you know, your max. Kind of, it's a mindset, I guess. There's a shared mindset between like type of weightlifting that you do and esports. But I, people like Big Boss Pine and Overwatch League have probably, you know, he's never lifted anything more than a fork. So it's obviously not a not a one way. Yeah, exactly. Ticket. <laughs> I don't know. It's got. I mean, it's definitely good for you. If anything, we'll live longer. There you go. If you had, um, I know you you dropped a hint earlier, or you dropped one way. But I think it was kill squills. Uh, obviously, maybe. Um, what what would you say? Somebody out there wants to get better at split gate. I I know what I would say, but I mean, what what would you say as a high level player? Oh, In more than one oh. sense. I mean, he kind of nails it right on the head. <laughs> um, start, start with one your or? aim. No, I would say start with your aim and then work your way up. It's not one of those things where you jump on. Like, I know, you know, Kill School, and I think Hawk was. He he just recently put his, you know, he's almost starting over. We all wanted to be fast. So we all went to, like, a 17-centimeter, 18-centimeter, 20-centimeter. Um, everybody wants to be faster, but what you really got to do is keep that same sensitivity. Like, don't give in yet, and then slowly raise it. Because it is a totally different game. And then you'll find that spot where you're right in the middle where you can still hit your shots, but you know, maybe you arm arm sweep to your portals and then maybe you speed that up a little bit more. But unless you're using raw excel, which some people do, I mean you, you gotta hone that aim first because you realize that you gotta win your one v ones. That's gonna be the most important part. And then portal placement. So I would say, and I've seen it just from some of these other pros from other games, um aim is one hundred percent the most important. And then portal placement so would you say you don't need it, the fancy stuff like you watch yeah. us portal around really fast like that has a time in its place but like that's probably not what's gonna win you the 4v4 you know what i mean i know because all that's yeah, i know when i try that like i i can portal around really fast like but when i when i do that as a total non-pro it it usually gets me killed because I get I discombobulate myself. Like I start portaling around like crazy because I do know the maps fairly well, but like yeah. I I'm not really thinking about anything anymore. I'm just like literally just going through portals and I just end up in some place where I don't consciously know what I'm even doing and I just get killed because I'm just like yeah, portaling a lot, a lot just of people to portal. Will, a lot of people will portal like let's say <laughs> point A B C where B is a safe spot where they could heal they go to C by accident because you get so caught up in portaling. Yeah. Right. So you got hurt in A. You need to be in B, but you portaled to C. So now there's someone there that killed you. Yeah. Where if you would have just take your time, think about it, you know, be safe, heal up, and then you're actually closer to get back in the fight too. Or, you know, calm with your team to wait for a push. So portal demon is, uh, it's, it's got its time in its place, but to start off, definitely have your aim where it needs to be and then work on portal mechanics after that. Mm-hmm. 
are there certain modes you'd recommend that people play? Because Splitgate does have, you know, and I always say this, it has like, you know, I, I love Halo Infinite personally, but like Splitgate <coughs> has like four times the modes that Halo Infinite has. And every weekend there's like a, uh, usually a, a playlist with bonus XP. But what would you recommend for people who want to really get better at Splitgate? Um, well, like uh, Kill School mentioned, they do have some custom maps now that you can do if you have a few friends around. There is aim duel maps. There's actually in the game, there's um aim training maps. So they have the dummies pop up and down, which is kind of cool. So that's going to get you used to actually where to hit your headshot. Uh, like in these games, because I feel like with split gate, you almost need to aim up a little bit. If you aim almost directly at the head when you're aiming down sights, I feel like you got to aim up at the head. At least that's just for me. Maybe might be my monitor or something, but uh, that's the way to only guarantee my headshot. And then you can just go into practice lobbies with a bunch of bots on hard mode and then just practice portaling away from them or do it as a TDM style so you can practice your spawn camping and trapping. I right? figure out if I put a portal here, why won't they spawn here? Like the distances like that. But uh, that'd be one of the bigger things. Yeah, takedown's good for mechanics, like Kill School said. But with anything, you got to play it to get better at it. So if your goal is to want to get into 4v4 tournaments, obviously takedown's only going to take you so far. Yeah. You're gonna I love SWAT personally. It's uh, the headshots. So you get your headshots down uh, is always a good start too. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, always fun to jump in a SWAT game. I know I was playing takedown uh, a little bit before the podcast today, and I, I, I'm pretty rusty uh, at Splicate in general at the moment. Um, but like I was literally in a game that forced me to get better at portals because nobody was really like good at portaling yeah. and neither team could finish each other off. Like we would just respawn, 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 respawn. I'm like, okay, like if we're actually going to like end these, these rounds ever, somebody has to start portaling around and finding that, like that last person. And like, it literally like in that <clears throat> moment, it like made me like force myself to like, all right, like I got to figure this out. And I felt like I actually got better like that game. It was pretty. Yeah. It's a quick cool thing, experience. Definitely. Right, you know, there's a portal wall behind them, so if you have the time, you're gonna place that. Yeah, or just like when you're searching, leave a portal in a certain place so you can reset as you're, you know, searching. Yeah, because and... it's the cool thing that hopefully we had a couple of videos on as we're going through this content wise is like, there's almost steps to it. Because mm -hmm. said if you play takedown all the time, you're not gonna know where weapon spawns are on four v four. So mm -hmm. you, you do need to spend some time on that. There's certain weapons that you're not gonna get to fast enough by yourself. And that's where, you know, sending somebody to that weapon is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is definitely not like you just jump right in. You know, it's going to take a lot of work and you got to learn who's going where and what spawns you're in. But it's definitely a little more complicated than I feel like any Call of Duty I ever played was. You could spawn and trap a little bit in those games, but not really. You can't spawn <laughs> trap somebody when they can portal out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? <laughs> so it gives, it gives you a, a mechanic right then and there to for some escapability. So it's kind of nice. So yeah, if you're if you're as successful at portaling as Roran is, uh, you you're never really stuck in 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 a spawn or in one situation. Yeah. You know what? You know what used to drive me crazy. Speaking of spawns, it still does to this day. <clears throat> Jade, I wish Jade I was here to talk about this. Gears of War has like spawn protection, and it drives me absolutely nuts because the person with spawn protection can kill you, but you're shooting oh, them and yeah. it does nothing. And it's I like hate games that do that where it's like we're beating you, like you so bad that we're being protection. punished uh, and and <laughs> dying, and, and like it actually can swing the momentum of the game. It's like, yeah, I it's so frustrating. It's funny. Yeah, I, I don't agree with spawn protection on any game. If you have to have spawn protection, that means that you coded the game shitty. Yeah, the my map losing. was built poorly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your team's yeah. losing if you're getting spawn trapped. Well, right. yeah, that, but n not only that, but like if they're if you're able to spawn trap, them, then the game design is flawed. Yeah. I I, I always thought that the idea for uh, spawn protection was to spawn people in a place where the other team just like literally can't lit physically can't yeah. get into and That's then once you're out the that, door like, and I'm you can okay shoot the that. other team you need to be able to take damage as well i'm I'm completely okay with that that makes a lot of sense but if you're spawning them in a place where they're vulnerable to be shot once they spawn right. then that's 
the fault of the game that you should not spawn. You shouldn't yeah. get additional protection because the game spawned you there. You know what I mean? All right. Well, we want to uh, kind of wind down here. We got a couple other things to go over. Um, and Roran, you're staying with us for the whole the whole show. Don't think you're getting out. We we got what? <laughs> <clears throat> So um, what do we just have to split it now? What are we talking about now? Well, we can still. T- I mean, I was going to ask you, you if you got if either shampoo? of you before we move on. You know, is there anything either one of no. you want to say about Splitgate or Nemesis Splitgate? I'm excited. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Me too. I'm, I'm excited to see. I'm. I'm can't wait this week, like just to check the team out, see how they're performing, and see how we place in these initial events and obviously we get to kind of take a back seat from the pro series and see how those teams are performing maybe build some strategy and you know i'm excited about that part too because there's a lot of things that can be done as far as coaching and scouting the other teams and seeing what weaknesses that they might have uh so, so we actually have a great relationship with like everybody <laughs> so the funny thing is i don't know if jarenic's still in here i think he was a uh, zach's maxed like I help. I just literally helped him hook up his two PC build. So like, and he's the coach. What is he coaching for? He's with Lumosity now. LG, maybe, yeah, LG maybe. Zach. But you know, he he's <coughs> going to go over even VOD reviews with us as well. It was just kind of cool. Like, yeah, but that's cool, that's what I'm saying. You know? Is that I think that's that's one of the most underrated things when you're competing. Uh, granted, I haven't competed in a long time, but being able to scout the other teams. And in some cases where you're, it's not the same for this team because you all kind of know, everybody knows everybody, but in some of those games where like the pros are kind of on a, on a pedestal and nobody really knows the teams below that, the amateur teams, the up and coming teams, sometimes it's kind of nice to be able to just scout all of them. uh, And they don't know what you guys are bringing to the table. So you can just, you know, overwhelmed i feel like they're gonna i feel like they're gonna i think <laughs> so. i think there's gonna be a little weird get out i think people are gonna say you know oh man i, I played against them i was in ranked and we played pugs with them or like we know you know jaren can kill and the hawk won the semi-pro champion like they they know the skills there it's just it's gonna come down to teamwork yeah, like, yeah. but that's what i'm saying it's kind of nice that you exciting. get to prepare and but you also get to kind of take a back seat and watch these other yeah. teams and see what they're doing live and well uh, also you're at it you're at it you're coming gameplay. into it because, you know, a lot of people would say coming up this season, you know, would knowingly say, OK, these teams have had no time to play with each other. But if you don't win, you're off, the, you're, you know, your contract's null. That's true. Where, yeah. where, you know, maybe we don't get as far as we thought we would, but that's because of one lack of time and training. And then, you know, we improve from there. And, and that's the really good thing had... about the position that we're in right now, too. And just kind of the... Uh... The, the idea that I have behind these projects too is it's not a, a I don't want to do these one-off things, right? I, I Like I mentioned to you guys, is I, I want it to be a long-term thing where it's mutually beneficial and we give the time, the team the adequate time to have those moving pieces and, you know, overcome those obstacles and build chemistry and um, get where they need to be. Uh, I'm not on a need to win now kind of timeline like some of these organizations are right like they yeah they jump into these games and they're like you know we're putting in x amount of dollars we're investing this we have you know they have these goals that absolutely have to be met and we're coming in free of that so it's kind of a more relaxed atmosphere yeah. saying hey look do what you guys need to do to get to that level and you know we'll take things as they come uh, i'm excited it's kind of for nice that. to not it's, have that not good. have that that level of expectation <clears throat> already set so we can just go out there relax and do what we need to do. Yeah. And I, I know the skills there, but you can, you can always see it's just going to be comms because I've ran into it all the time, you know, four of the best players in the game that don't play together and they're just portaling away from each other because they got four people that might not be as good as them, they're, but they're are the actually best, together. <laughs> the best individual players doesn't mean that they're the best yeah. team. And I'm excited for that because I know that, these guys already know how to play at a high level or have and you know are willing to share the experience that they have instead of you know hoarding it and you know they they want to see the best from every other teammate individually and together to succeed not only in like content but esports as well so i feel like that mutual goal is going to really help you know build it closer together um i got i got at least two things to say here uh first of all if you log in to Splitgate right now, 
if you haven't lately, you will literally see Rorn's face in the bottom right hand uh, corner of the screen, which is pretty cool. So go install Splicate if you want to stare at a Rorn with a different haircut. I don't know how old that photo is, but that's actually only like three months old. Oh, really? Cool. Uh, yeah, so saying to Cory and <laughs> shattered his face and bald. That wasn't that bald. So Rorn's literally it's featured bummer. in Splitgate right now. And then uh, second of all, I was going to say that, you know, something you guys were just talking about was something that's exciting about Splitgate and, you know, Nemesis coming into the Splitgate scene and, and kind of trying to come up and change, change, make waves kind of, you know, be unexpected. One of the per things that I always liked uh, about Splitgate tournaments, because I used to do commentary for Splitgate uh, tournaments with Endo. Um, it was actually the the ban, the the map bans and the map picks and stuff. And it, whenever yeah. somebody did something like picked a really unexpected map, I always loved that because it, it was just. I remember it happened several times where like, uh, I think somebody picked Oasis one time, like out out of the blue, <coughs> like and. Yeah. It ended up, I can't remember who set set the record, but somebody got like a, God, I, I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name, but it was like a 36 kill, like kill streak and like a professional, mm. and it was on Oasis. And it was just because it was so, no, the pros did not play Oasis. And like moments like that in, in any professional game, I think are just like really, it's really exciting. And I, yeah. m maybe you can work some of, some of that in there, Roran, practice on some really crazy maps and then, uh. Oh, pick dude! The, pick well, those that maps. was one of the uh, that was one of the tourney spots in the boom boom ten k was a uh, Oasis TDM, and we just mopped the floor. I had a really good team, but we mopped the floors. It was me, Akubo, Klo, and Jarnik. <laughs> so we didn't we didn't win it, but we held our own really well. Yeah, I'm really excited for uh, for new maps in Splitgate too. Like. Yeah, I, I know there's. At Did least you say they were bringing back map bands? I I don't know for sure, but I'm just like oh, stuff okay. like that. Like when you guys were talking about like kind of being unexpected, and you know, yeah, like that, that that's exciting. Like kind of building something, yeah. uh, coming out of nowhere and then kind of shaking the scene up. Like that's what I thought of was like the the map band yeah. phase and just picking some some wild. For for Splitgate Pro series, the the rule sets probably set. I'm sure, yeah. but. Yeah, I'm super excited for everything though, and and Splitgate is not going anywhere. We've already proven that it it won't, even with the low player base. You know, you're always going to have that, so it's not going anywhere. So they held community tournaments when there was only 200 people involved. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's not going anywhere. They have that drive, that passion. So good time to get in on a underrated game with underrated devs. Yeah, they've they've weathered the worst of it for sure, and yeah, and it's only. Only up from here, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Um, so winding down here, uh, just a, just a couple kind of closing notes. Uh, the rest of our E three conferences are over the next week or two. Um, so I'm just gonna go over a few that are happening real quick. The Modern Warfare two reveal gameplay reveal, which I know a lot of people, including these two, uh, Roy and Maz, will probably be pretty excited for. Uh, is this Wednesday? Wednesday at 1 p.m. EST. Uh, Warzone 2 might also be revealed that same day. Uh, the Big Summer Game Festival, Jeff Keeley's uh, kind of, I don't want to say it's a flagship at this point, but kind of flagship uh, gaming convention. This Thursday at 2 p.m. EST, Devolver will have some crazy freaking show uh, that day for sure. If you had never watched a Devolver digital conference, uh, I suggest you do so, and I guarantee you will have no idea what is going on. And then uh, Microsoft and Bethesda go on Sunday at 1 p.m. EST. They kind of get the last word in there. So anything you guys I are hoping Bethesda. to see this, this well, week with the game I love announcements? Bethesda, and... But I'm, I'm sad that <laughs> I know they're going to screw us over on Sony side for the next Elder Scrolls. Which I'm not looking for. Not necessarily. To. I mean, <laughs> some of the franchises are staying multi-plat. Well, well, they basically, <laughs> in no uncertain terms, they've said basically said that they're gonna have exclusive stuff for Xbox and PC. So yeah, that's not good news to have. Um, 
this has nothing to do with any of the companies that you just named, but I just want to see Time Splitters make a comeback. That's all I'm going to say. About that. <laughs> That's going to be, Jesus, I will bet you. <laughs> you want to take a bet on that one? Because I can get rich quick if you want to do that. There's a company working on it right now. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. hopefully it's not too far out. Uh, Devolver, they've had they've had some decent games that I played at PAX. Uh, I'm always looking forward to Bethesda. Uh, I'm sure they'll show us, even though they had to push uh, Starfield or yeah. whatever uh, ne- into next year. Hopefully, they have some stuff to show us from it, even though they pushed the game out. Oh, oh it'll be here. Hundred percent. How about you, Roran? Any big games you're hoping to see this next coming week or two? I'm still just looking for something fresh, man. Somebody to just come in, kind of like Blood Hunt, but not. Blood Hunt wasn't it for me, but I yeah. can see where the appeal is. But the, it's so similar to Hyperscape that I was, yeah. you know, in you know what's, Do you know what's really going to take Blood Hunt to the next level, guys? If they add more VS2s. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want another first-person fast-paced. Like, okay, it, literally, if Splitgate had a baby now with Call of Duty, like Black Ops 4, like, remember Blackout? It's going to be X if Defiant. We, if we did a VR <laughs> like not... that. But I, I want to keep it simple, man. I want weapon pickups just on the ground. I don't want putting armor in. I, I just wonder. Want exactly split gate. <clears throat> weapon, like, just automatic heals, too. No healing. I want to see four people bunker down in a little, like, house type thing. Like, imagine a nuke town house. With a so few you basically in want it. Call of Duty 2, but fast-paced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I got like, good news for you, so I think. Uh, there's, it's been rumored for a long time that uh, a Quake reboot is in is in the works. So I think I don't know if you ever played Quake back in the day, but uh, I think that would be. I want to play it. Yeah. That's for damn sure. <clears throat> I just need that a uh, little, little quicker, a little faster. Warzone's not quite it. There's not much to. Do. Cyber Hunter was not bad, but it's over on with hackers. That's like a decent fast pace, half Fortnite, half. Yeah, PUBG I, type I used to play a fast paced game called Guns. Did you guys ever play that back in the day? Guns Way Online? The Dude, yeah. I have some usernames that you might have heard of because I had two of the top clans in the game. Man, I played I played Guns religiously when I was younger. Uh, I was until it got Mr. Over TBF that, and Dr. Game TBF. So man. Crunker is what you guys I, need to play. Crunker. I, I still, I still know Crunker. the developer. Eh? I still know the Guns developer. He uh, sometime last. Uh, Last year, he actually paid me to promote a few of his little uh, private server games. He still runs a server. Guns is so actually, want to get back. it was a good game. It just got overrun with hackers, and I stopped playing. Yeah. Because it, so it, it's no fun when you go into a game, and you literally can't do any damage to somebody. Like, that's just yeah. not fun. <laughs> it's almost better now, because there's about 200 concurrent players. But it's one of those tight-knit things, right? One little yeah. peep, because most of the time, the community is are the dev team. We'll get so, Titanfall 3 it, in about... 30 more years so keep keep yeah. holding on i love bears man i just want something fresh <laughs> me too i like i like blood hunt so yeah but it looked good know. blood hunt's just not not my thing but it does what about yeah, spell break have good. you played spell break? <laughs> That's, spell talk about break. a game with 30 players <laughs> but so it was great look, they could it have, really was they could have easily reskinned spell break and it could have been a harry potter game like i'm not even lying yeah if they yeah. wanted it to be trash it, it could have easily been a harry potter uh, battle royale <laughs> Uh, to answer a few questions in chat, uh, there's three different Paragon uh, kind of reboots coming out. Overprime is one. I don't think you'll see it at E3. What is it? It's like Overprime, Predecessor, and then Fault. And they're all coming out within like a year. And then, um, yes, Modern Warfare 2 is said to have an Escape for Tarkov-like mode. And I've heard it hyped a lot. They say it's really good, but um, time will tell. Call of Duty's always super overhyped. So, spoiler, uh, the community manager for Predecessor is a, a personal friend, so uh, we're definitely gonna be trying that game out. Uh, the community manager, from Planet too. yeah, nice. So, he, it? he's he's an EverQuest player as well. Oh, okay, because yeah. I, I know, I know, Instill was really into uh, <laughs> <Nerd>. <laughs> was really into yeah, I'm, a, I'm an Uber nerd, yeah. I, I played uh, EverQuest, I still, I love which one you said it was Predecessor, ago. yeah. Okay. Predecessor. Okay. I played Overprime I, a lot, and I thought it was I'm really sure good. I'm sure we're gonna. I'm sure we're gonna get codes and play all of those games because and still started on Paragon. That's actually uh, Nemesis Twitch team started with people from Paragon. 
So we actually have Back Nemesis was literally started from Paragon streamers. So... It's a really good game. It's a really uh, interesting blending third person shooting with with MOBA. I, I think it's great. Like the whole yeah, concept. No, is great. I, I I think the concept's good. Uh, but I, I know that's going to be a big part of Nemesis because we have a lot of people that we started with originally that already had a passion for Paragon and it's just going to carry over. Uh, so I'm sure we'll be playing that game a lot as a as a community. Um, the Quarry, a new Demon Slayer game and Mario Striker Battle League also released this week. So if you're looking for a new game and one of those floats your boat, then there you go. It's coming out. All coming out like tomorrow, I think. Um, so I think that's it for our show this week, right? Anybody else got anything uh, we need to add? No, I, I'm just excited to to check out this team, Splitgate, play some more Splitgate myself, get get it portaling because I'm I'm bottom tier right now. <laughs> I'm portaling. The podcast? Uh, then. But... What's that? What'd you say, Ron? You guys coming to scrim a little bit after the podcast? Today? Yeah. Uh, maybe not today. I, I I have laundry behind me. I need to fold. But if I can be on uh, your team, I will. <laughs> it was fun playing the other day. I'm surprised we lost the game. Actually, we were doing so good. I think it's because um, Roaring definitely let us down. That's why. <laughs> the last game. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we were dying every like three seconds that last <laughs> game, and Roaring was trying to survive for 20 seconds so we could <laughs> win around. So uh, that team that we played the last game was actually pretty good, but. No, uh, scrim live on the podcast. Yeah, do it. that's what we should do. <laughs> just, we're just gonna turn this into a, a split gate stream. Hey, uh, oh, a dual, oh, a split gate, uh, was... dual stream or triple stream. <laughs> yeah, we'll just share a screen instead of faces. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the show, Roran, and thanks for uh, captaining the Nemesis split gate team. I know I'm super excited to watch the team, and I know many others are. So, looking forward to big things. Yeah, me too. Appreciate it. Guys. All right, so uh, we are gonna look before we just end the. We're gonna raid somebody from the Nemesis team. So okay. I'm just. I'm gonna, gonna show everybody our sponsors real quick. If we're all good, yeah. I'm gonna shut us up and show everybody our sponsors, and we can raid <laughs> away. Yeah, just looking at the list here to see who's on and and what they're playing. Somebody that hopefully doesn't have. If they're playing lot. anything, uh, Harry Potter or Star Wars, you can't raid them. <laughs> I will. So we have our co-owner that is playing V Rising. We have uh, Hobbs playing Monster Hunter. We have King Dud playing Fortnite. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I refuse to send somebody to watch Fortnite, but <laughs> there's a new season <laughs> out though. <laughs> it wouldn't be Started my first Sunday. choice. Uh, I think we should probably send them to. Uh, I was gonna say let's sit, let's send them in still. We're talking about okay. uh, predecessor and and overprime and all that and our OG who built our uh, Twitch team kind of from the ground up while I was focusing on esports. So we'll show him a little bit of love here. Okay, let so me. I'll send. I'll do a little send off here. So everybody, our sponsors, and we will see you back here next Monday at 6 p.m. Central. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>